There has been an enormous battery boom here in Australia, but in the United States, the same thing is happening. Deployments of batteries worldwide this year are more than double last year. This is only the tip of the iceberg. And the reason is because even though battery prices have come down enormously over the past couple of years, the prices we're paying for batteries today will be seen as enormous in comparison to what they'll cost in five years' time. All that said, though, US, in terms of battery deployment, it's had its best quarter in history over the past three months. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. The US battery storage market had its biggest market ever. In Q2 2025, a record 5.6 gigawatts of new capacity came online according to the latest US Energy Storage Monitor report from the American Clean Power Association and from Wood McKenzie. Most of that Q2 growth came from utility scale projects, mega batteries, huge mega packs, which added 4.9 gigawatts, enough to power 3.7 million homes during peak demand. During normal demand, it would be probably double that number. More and more states are building out batteries. And the reason is, um, well, one of the reasons is because they've been wasting, like Australia, like Europe, like many countries, wasting huge amounts of renewable energy because most renewables, not all of them, but most is generated during the daytime when the sun's out. And people don't usually use electricity during that period of time. So really what this is doing it's almost generating electricity for free because instead of wasting it, these battery packs are able to just store previously wasted energy. I think it's um, a great solution. Texas, California, and Arizona each added more than one gigawatt of new capacity. The Southwest Power Pool, which hadn't seen new battery storage projects in three years, which is insane, saw a big return with three installations in Oklahoma, Florida and Georgia are now forecast to deploy more battery storage than uh, what well, was previously expected to happen. The biggest reason is the declining cost in batteries. Because as batteries get cheaper, they become more logical to actually install. But it's not actually just a declining cost. It's also the movement away from NMC batteries or NCM batteries Nickel, cobalt, manganese batteries, right? In the past, those were used for energy storage. They're more expensive than lithium-ion phosphate, don't last as long. And remember, sodium-ion batteries actually last quite a bit longer than lithium-ion phosphate batteries. Plus, they're going to be much cheaper. And the US has begun installing sodium-ion grid batteries as well. Energy storage is being quickly deployed to strengthen our grid as demand for power surges and is helping to drive down energy prices for American families and businesses. Despite regulatory uncertainty, the industry is on track to produce enough grid batteries in U.S. factories to meet 100% of domestic demand, said Noah Roberts, the ACP president of energy storage. Now, imagine if Donald Trump wasn't in power, forcing some of these states to keep their coal power plants running. Electricity prices in the U.S. have nearly doubled over the past 12 months. And that is not because of, renew of renewable energy, as many, uh, unfortunately, many people have been uh, conned or tricked into believing. It's actually because of these old coal power plants costing enormous sums of money to keep them going, keep them working. They're costing millions of dollars per day. Home batteries are booming as well. The residential battery storage market surged, adding 608 megawatts per electric and that was in Q2 alone, which was growth of 132% versus Q2 of last year. California, Arizona, and Illinois led growth as, well, many people are buying their own batteries, their own home batteries. The industrial, the community, commercial, and industrial segment grew much more slowly, shockingly. Only 38 megawatts was installed. That's growth of 11% year over year. And California and New York made up more than 70% of that capacity. So outside of California, California and New York, 
There is very little going on in the community, commercial, and industrial segment. The grid scale batteries and home batteries are completely dominating the market. The ACP Wood Mac report forecasts 88 gigawatts of US storage by 2029, with residential and utility scale projects leading. So here's the thing though. The Trump administration is anti-renewables, and this will slow down growth of batteries. Pricing and FEOC, foreign entity of concern, uncertainty, in other words, trying to block batteries from China, and slow community storage development are expected to limit CCI growth before below one gigawatt by 2029, said Alison Feeney from Wood Mackenzie. It's just a nice way of saying that um, the Trump administration is not encouraging uh, it's not helping. It's actually going to slow it down. She said that residential storage will likely outpace solar thanks to strong incentives, especially in markets like California and Puerto Rico. Alison Weiss, Wood Mackenzie's global head of storage, said Trump's big bill preserved the investment tax credit for batteries, but strict sourcing rules after 2025 will reduce the five-year outlook by 16.5 gigawatts. So it is true. Uh, preventing batteries from Chinese companies uh, from being used in the United States will have a significant effect. Remember, lithium ion phosphate batteries in China, they're, they're about half the price in China versus what they cost in the United States. Anyway, even though there was certainly some challenges coming, the good news is right now, energy storage deployments in the US are nearly double what they were last year. In some countries, they've actually tripled this year versus last year, like for example, Australia, but at least you guys are heading in, in kind of the right direction. Let me know what your thoughts are, how you feel about this in the comments. Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.